Little John. I've never been dead. And we've had other guests come on who have been uh, Olympic level out of body explorers and things like this. Do you recommend uh, the average person or people uh, take that sort of journey? Do you see any benefit to someone learning the art of lucid dreaming or the art of, of OB? I, mean, I know this are all plays on consciousness and what the mind can do and whether or not uh, one can always enjoy most things. If you have a level of detachment and balance, you can take something in and gain something from it and then move on with where you, your, your journey should go. Do you see any benefit in learning to lucid dream or OB? Did you guys discuss that? Is that related to what you were doing? And if it is, is there any path or thing that one could do to enhance that or go down that? Absolutely. Route? It's really easy too. Astral journeying okay. is not quite the same as lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming is akin to remote viewing. It's on certain levels. Remote viewing is not the same as astral viewing. Remote viewing uh, which is akin, like I said, to uh, lucid dreaming. When you do remote viewing, you haven't left your body, you haven't left your brain, but what you are doing is focusing your mind in different coordinates of the universal mind that you are an integral part of. So a very easy but a bad example is if you put your whole mind into your toe right now, your whole mind now becomes aware of your big toe on whatever foot you're thinking about. So you can put your mind, you can feel, you press your big toe into the floor and you can feel the pressure. You can put your mind into the big toe. You haven't left your body or anything of that nature. You've just focused on different coordinates. Now, the one mind is in all things. Scientifically now, it's the evidence is overwhelming that the universe is alive. It's a living entity. Scientific fact, there is this thing now called the cosmic web where everything is connected. Scientific fact. Quantum entanglement is in all things. You are connected that way. The, the evidence is so overwhelming, it has to be accepted as fact now. So remote viewing is purely removing the pinpoint focus of that mind out of the center of your brain and you're focusing it, I don't know, wherever, Japan or, or wherever it is you're focusing on mm -hmm. and it will go there, not a problem. And astral journeying is basically mm -hmm. you are getting out of your body spiritually, you are leaving your body but you haven't detached, you are still attached to it. There's this, an umbilical cord that attaches you to your body. In which case, while you're astral journeying, if a dog jumps on your body in the bed, you, you'll come back straight away. Most people in the world, you've been laying on, on your couch, watching TV on a Sunday afternoon, and suddenly you go, <laughs> you know, that feeling, and it's like, come back into your body. What happened? That was, you're just starting to move out. Your brain was lost in the movie or whatever it is you're watching, and that will release you. And then, boom, you come back in because someone dropped a plate or someone moved in the lounge room. Astral journeying is taking that to a zenth degree. So some of the best astral journeyers are people on death row. I don't know if they still have a death row, but they, they were some of the best because sitting in a room 24-7, a small room at that, knowing that one day you're going to be executed and you don't know what's going to happen after that, you don't know about death, you haven't done any of that stuff, becomes so intense, your body will throw you out and you will have a, an astral experience. Um, and some of these people actually have enlightening experiences at the same time. Most monks that reach that stage aren't monks that are running around in a monastery with a bunch of other monks. Most of the monks that reach that stage are in isolation for that same reason. Now, how do you do it? Very, very easy. Getting back to the visualization, telling your brain what you want it to have. There's a very, very famous um, lady Kabbalist, and her name was Dion Fortune, and she pointed out way back in, I guess, the Crowley days, really, she pointed out that if you have something in your mind and you hold it there long enough, very quickly, you will have it in your hand. 
So you just focus on something long enough, it will manifest. Why? Because you're telling your brain in picture form, in its own language, what it is you want. And your brain can do that. It's a very powerful thing. Thank you.